Hello everybody, welcome back to the Daily Kerbal. I've finally given in, and I have started using mods. Specifically, I have installed two mods, and all the mods required to run those. One of them is the Kerbal Attachment System, which is something that should make it easier for me to build bases and not have to worry about high, how high the docking ports are. I decided to do this after I tried to build an ore tanker for the latest Minmus uh, Ike base that we built, but just simply couldn't get the docking port to be at the right height. For some reason, I can't explain it. It worked in the vehicle assembly building and then not on the surface of the planet. I deleted several recordings because of that, because they were wasted flights. So I just buckled down and I got the Kerbal Attachment System, which adds winches and hoses that you can use to attach to spacecraft that land on your planet. And you can basically just do what any normal human being would do on a planet, which is just attach a gas pipe to the ship that lands there. You don't actually have to attach your ship to your base. Speaking of bases, the other mod that I downloaded is the Planetary Base System, which adds an entirely new set of parts, an overwhelmingly large set of new parts, all designed around constructing planetary bases. They look like this. It even comes with a very handy little adapter for uh, placing them all on a rocket to be able to fly to various planets. And that is exactly what we're going to do today. We are going to be sending this. This is going to become our Duna base. We're just going to start and send a base straight out to Duna, and then we'll worry about fixing up a base on Ike later. So just to very quickly explain how this works, I literally just downloaded this mod and started playing with it, so forgive me if I, you know, forget something. This is the command pod. This is where our pilot is going to be sitting. I'm going to assemble our crew in a second, but this is where it's going to be piloted from. This is the crew mod, uh, the, the crew module. This is where the crew sleeps and rests and spends their day. This is the science pod. These are two separate modules, by the way. They're going to be landing and docking on the surface through these docking ports that are uh, planetary base shaped. These gray parts here, these are the thrusters that are going to help them land, but they're basically just going to land using the, the parachutes mostly. And then they got little wheels on the side of them. That if I, if I uh, deploy them, they look like this. There you go. They look like that. So they can land on those. And then they can roll around while they're down on the ground. It's not, I imagine, you know, for running high speeds, but it's good enough to just kind of connect them to each other. It's basically what they're going to be for. This module is going to be run by a, uh, yeah, a probe core that is so thin, I basically thought it was attached to this. You've got some battery power here. You got uh, pretty much everything that I think we can need. We got solar power and we have communication. This will basically satisfy our Duna base contract. In fact, this one half of the base itself should should uh, satisfy this. This being a two two Kerbal pod, this being a three Kerbal pod. So that, sh that should be fine. Last thing to decide, who's going to be going? Valentina, obviously. I have brought her back from the Duna base specifically for this mission. Uh, I think having one pilot should be enough, but... Uh, it's about time we sent some, some newbies out there to, to make names for themselves. So I'm going to send out a second pilot. Uh, not Neil or somebody with low experience. Do, do, do. It would probably be Mirbart. Sure, Mirbart. Get in there. Okay, now we're going to need a scientist. Uh, scientist is going to be Buzz. Buzz Kerman. And then also, finally, with these new mods that I installed, engineers are going to have a purpose now. They're going to be quite useful. So I'm going to send... I mean, we have we have space left. Hang on a second. This is wrong. No, you guys you guys be in the, uh, the command module. And then this is the this is the planetary habitat. That's where we want everybody else. This is just going to be attached there via uh, uh, probe core. So, I'm going to send, I think, one scientist and two engineers. I think that's what I'm going to do. So I have the, the engineers. That's all I have, isn't it? Well, in that case, I think I'll just send Samri. 
there. And then we're going to have a four Kerbal crew for the landing on Duna. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the introduction to the ship. I'm going to leave you now. And when I return, I am going to have fast-forwarded time to the right spot for us to perform a Duna flight. And I might even just skip the whole getting into orbit phase. I mean, you can you can pretty much imagine it, right? Big rocket launches it up there, and then hopefully we have enough left in this pod. But since we're going to be doing a very close flight, and I intend to use Duna's atmosphere itself to help slow us down and get us into orbit, I imagine that, you know, the whole flight is going to be pretty... Uh, pretty fuel efficient. We shall see. I will see you shortly. Okay, so the orbital phase is going pretty well. We're uh, still at stage one. Um, again, this is pretty much happening in pitch dark because I was too lazy to turn time ahead to the next morning, or, you know, I just kind of didn't notice. You can never see from the vehicle assembly building, right? You can never see in the vehicle assembly building because you always think it's daytime in there. So, yeah, I didn't, I didn't want to keep a thing sitting out on the launch pad, although, you know, I really don't know why not. Anyway, we're good. We're doing pretty well. We've got a apoapsis above 70,000 meters, so, you know, orbiting should, you know, be fairly regular. Uh, just in case, you know, you're a regular follower, I know I have a couple, <laughs> uh, and you're wondering, you know, what's going on with the whole reusable rocket stuff, I'm still doing that. I've actually, if I, like, uh hit the map here and turn on the probes, you'll notice that there is a probe sitting down there in the middle of the ocean. That's because I kind of got this very stupid idea to try and put a barge out there for the, the rocket to land on. You know, twice we've had the problem of the rocket landing in water. So, I figured, you know, why not just... Excuse me, music came in suddenly. Uh, figured, you know, why not just put a barge out in the middle of the ocean? I mean, that's what SpaceX did, right? I mean, how hard can it be? And then in a couple test flights, I tried to land on it. Didn't work out. It's another couple of recordings you're not going to see. But, uh... I mean, the reusable rocket thing is still obviously not something that I can do with stuff that's this big. But I imagine with, like, spaceships, simple ships that I'm going to send out to, uh... to Duna for, for transport flight, I might easily be able to make reusable rockets. That's going to be a project that I'm going to keep working on, and we'll, we'll jump back to that every now and then. Because it's nice to uh, keep, you know, mixing up the quote-unquote fantastical, like what I'm doing right now, colonizing Mars, and the, uh, the non-fiction, the actual experimental stuff happening right now, which would be the, the reusable rocket stuff. So yeah, all that you know, to come. For now, let's just worry about getting ourselves into orbit. I'm actually going to cut the engines here. Let us drift a bit up to the apoapsis. And we'll start burning again. Burn is more efficient up here. And we want, ideally, we'd like to have some of the fuel left in this stage to help get us on our way to Duna. I gotta say, I really like the look of these rockets. This, <laughs> oh man! So ever since I did that uh, video that I made about the Apollo flight, Apollo 11, I just I really like those rockets. There we go. Okay, out of fuel. Stage separation. Let's keep moving. Pushing us out into stable orbit shouldn't take long. That should be fine. Now, time to plot our Duna flight. Got about one orbit before we get in position. We've got to set this as our target. And let's see how we're doing. Yeah, I'd like to preferably reach it over there. Yeah. It's going to take us a bit. Yeah, the burn is going to be a bit longer. I could... Uh, do I really need to... That'd be a long flight. And 
I kind of need the fuel, so I'm just... Yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. We've got a 13 million uh, meter periapsis. That should be fine. We'll, we'll correct that later with, uh, you know. Okay. And now we just kind of have the... Uh, have the rocket set its, uh, set its node. There we go. Now we just kind of wait. I'm going to, it, it says that the burn's going to take three minutes. All that seems long enough to me. The last engine that was active was the poodle. So I'm going to assume that it's calculating by the thrust of the correct engine this time. So just kind of kind of let us rotate. And then off we go. Nine. Eight, seven, six, five, four, a bit more than three, like right about here. All right, keep us oriented. And now let's see how this goes. All right, off we go. I do hope this doesn't terribly screw up our orbit. <clears throat> well, periapsis is growing, so we should be fine. Alright. Ideally, we're looking to have... Oh, looking at the rate at which we're losing fuel, yeah, this is, uh... Yeah, we're gonna lose a lot, but that's okay, because we're, we're looking to land right now anyway. Landing along the equator would be preferable. We'll, we'll see how much fuel we have left over. I'm going to tell you this much. Won't be a lot. Don't think you can see much of this. You can see a bit if I do this. Contrast us to the, towards the stars. Pretty sight, isn't it? Really nice. Can also extend these antennas. There we go. Yeah, so looking at the, the delta V that we have and the fuel that we have, right, we have we started burning at about a full tank of fuel. And we're about a third of the way down, a bit, just a bit more than half, and we've already completed more than half of our burn. So I'm assuming that we're going to be... We're going to have very little fuel left over. Could be a bit problematic, but, you know, we'll see. In the meantime, I should probably take a look at this staging here, because i got to think about how I want to do this. Uh, this module here is going to be responsible for, you know, slowing us down with air brakes and, uh, and a parachute. But we're still going to want to make sure that we deploy at the right time. All of these thrusters... The thrusters are kind of secondary here. What matters is that we separate... That separates to provide us a heat shield. But uh, these two, this and this, separate to drop the modules. And when these separate... Okay. Camera just flipped. So I assume that means that we're... Yeah. Now, yeah, gotta get ready to shut us off. It was there. It was there for a second. Okay. Got to flip us. No, no, no. Actually, we're fine here. Then just activate the RCS. And then see if this helps. Is anything happening? Why is nothing happening? Okay, it is. Why didn't it just... Oh, right. That's why. Okay, we need to flip over to the retrograde vector. And then I can get rid of this node. There we go. Now 
now I'll just use the RCS. See how close we can get. I'm tapping the forward button, by the way, is what I'm doing. There we go. Okay, so 7 million is about as close as we can get. We'll correct that halfway. Uh, but let me get back to the staging quickly before we set off. So, make sure that's just warp out into the sun. There we are. Okay, so you guys can see what I'm looking at. All right, uh, this can we can actually just turn off SAS and uh, doesn't matter if we're spinning. We'll just spin out in space for a bit. Uh, so these two separate. That drops these modules right from the from the center carrier, and then all four parachutes have to deploy. This one comes first. This one comes before we separate the stages, right? So we separate that. It gives us the heat shield on the bottom. Then we activate the parachute and the air brakes simultaneously. Then once we've slowed down or once we're at the right height, then we drop these, and then we drop these parachutes. While I'm here, I should probably also toggle the, uh, yeah. Minimum pressure can probably even be lower than that. It's because we're landing on Duna with a very thin atmosphere. So, Anyway, yeah, and in, in, you know, the worst case, if we need to slow down, we got some thrusters to help out. Let's go. Never done this before. I've never used these parts. This could turn out to be fairly disastrous. And we are running on the new difficulty settings too, right? So this is uh, we're actually starting to see our money disappear. Anyway, let's do this flight. It's fine, off we go. Right about this spot here is where we're gonna wanna start correcting our course. Right, we're gonna we wanna do it like 45 degrees. Uh, sorry, 90 degrees, right there. Okay, it's got the little base icon. We're a base, flying base. All right. Almost. Mm -hmm. There we go. That's about right. Now I'll turn the SAS back on and point us prograde. Okay, this is probably the uh, the remote guidance unit doing that right now. It's not uh, not Valentina. There we go. The next mod that I should probably download is uh, rover parts. You can make prettier looking rovers. I don't want to go like too ham on the mods for now. I just want to, you know, I wanted to start out with a couple of ones that I find personally useful for my own games, and then, you know, we'll see where we go with that. But for now, let's just see if we can't correct that course. Gotta focus on Duna. Let's see how we're looking. Yep, that's, uh, that's not too good. So let's turn the RCS on, and then let's get maneuvering. Okay, so we want to approach Duna from this side. Where are we? This is this is the escape, right? Yeah, so we're coming in from here. Obviously. There's a station. We got a, an Ike encounter there. Whoop. All right, swoop this around. And now this is the hard part. Got to get us at like an angle that is enough to slow us down, but not stop us. Eesh. How are we doing? It's not bad. 25,000 seems a bit low. 50,000 seems a bit high. Uh, 37. Yeah, I think I like that. I think I like that. Yeah. What happens if I tap it just once more? Nope, nope that's too much. 50. 
Yeah, okay, well, we'll, we'll stay with this 37 for now. I'm gonna quick save. Oh, nope, 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 darn it. Quick save. I'm gonna quick save here, I don't wanna quick load. <laughs> Heavens no. Okay, so we quick save there, so we'll find out if that's good enough. Okay, so. One edited out flight later. I'm actually gonna bring our periapsis a bit lower than 37,000. Uh, flight was attempted, flight was unsuccessful. I'm gonna see if I can I can do this a little better. Uh, what am I doing here? I'm turning gets on. No, I just gotta tap this. Other way. There. I will do that. Thirteen thousand is pretty high up, but I have confidence. I have lots of confidence. Not a lot of brains, but plenty of confidence. Quick save. Now, let's bring her in. I don't think I, act, I have to worry about correcting the orbit. Duna is pretty much, you know, parallel to Kerbin in almost all ways. Looking at some of these planets. Yeah, some of these... Uh, some of these orbits look very daunting. That, that should be interesting in the future. Okay. We're on our approach. pretty quickly. Just make sure that that's all ready by the time we get there. Oh, look at that. Okay, so uh, last time what happened was I didn't come in close enough and I ended up flinging myself out into outer space. So this time, once again, I'm going to re retract these antennas. I realize that they would help us provide a little extra drag, but, uh, yeah, it's not worth it. I wonder if my staging is still correct here. I, yeah, I, I put all these parachutes into here, because I need those to turn on simultaneously. And I'm also going to increase the altitude on this, maybe even up to maximum. Because we need that, we need this parachute to start slowing us down very quickly. And I might have even, like, maybe some extra parachutes on this would have would have helped us as well. In fact, at this point, I'm kind of thinking that we, I can make a separate stage for this and have those parachutes open up too, provide some extra drag, and then drop them separately later. In fact, yeah, that's probably the best thing to do. Anyway, speed this up, shall we? We go. We're in Duna's atmosphere. There we go. Fuel should be. Let's see how much it's good for. This could also prove to be disastrous. I'm also noticing that we're very close to running out of electrical charge. That would have sucked even more. Apparently we're not facing any any sunlight. Okay, this is starting to get a little alarming. But we're actually... Yeah, no. No, no, no. Okay. I'm feeling a bit better now. Oh, uh, I should also point out that this configuration, having the air brakes on the top, this is something that I just nicked directly from the from the KSpedia. All the things that are happening right here. It's basically from their, straight out of their book. Okay, there we go. That's the engines gone. So let's, uh, let's drop that. Uh, deploy this chute. Please deploy. 
Please deploy soon. Alright. Okay, we can turn off the RCS and the SAS. Just let the aerodynamics pull her in. How we doing? Okay, we're slowing down. It's not bad. Okay, I've deployed the rest of the parachutes. See how that helps us. These things should come. Oh my goodness. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Gotta do this fast. Should have done this quicker. How are we doing now? That's a bit better. Let's do that with these two. There we go. Okay. Now as soon as all the parachutes deploy fully, I imagine that we should set down fairly easily. Practically no trouble. Okay, that's the main chute. Fully deployed. Alright, there goes our or a bit. Okay, that was that was actually the altitude for the main deployment, I think. And look at that. Yeah, we're slowing down much better now. Okay. Had me worried there for a second. I'll just turn these air brakes off now. We don't need those. They just look ugly. Okay, and once these things deploy fully too, then we should be all set. Right? Right? We should be all set. You guys gonna, you guys gonna deploy for us? Here, let me just, uh, yeah, there we go. Hey, hey, no, give me that one. I want that one. Okay, now how we doing? Yeah. Still not the best. So I guess this is the point where I separate these two. Okay, turn on your landing gear. Switch over to you, turn on your landing gear, and then, oh, that doesn't, that doesn't help, okay. So basically, I think at this point, I just, oh crap, I gotta extend this. Okay, how far are we? I'm looking for my shadow. Those look like our shadows. Okay. Can, we can turn this on. And then I hope... I, I never bothered to check what these... What the stats are on these legs. Like how good they are. And what they can, uh, what they can withstand. We're falling at 18 point something meters per second. So I'm actually going to flip over to this guy because this is the more important of the two crafts. It's the one that has all our crew in it. That one can crash and burn up for all we care. This one can't. So let's see what happens if I switch the SAS on. Try to even us out a bit. Nope, no, 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 no. Okay, forgot to throttle off first. Now that that one's closer though. Nope, it survived, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, brakes on. Other guy, brakes on. All right, well, that was ever so slightly scary, but we did it. <laughs> I'm glad I'm glad that apparently the legs could survive the thrust, but, you know, in the future, I should have even noticed this from the picture. That's clearly four parachutes there. <laughs> uh, we got the base down, and this basically counts as the contract complete. So that's good, and we got... Nowhere near as much money as we got from contracts previously, right? And I also took a bunch down to add reputation. But yeah, we got this thing done now. Now let me see how this thing handles. So we want to find a nice flat spot, like the top of that... Uh... Yeah, it runs pretty well. Top of that hill looks, looks fairly nice. So I'm going to drive us right up there. That's cool. We have a base on wheels. We can just kind of move it around in the future if we need to. I feel like 
I've I've may I may have been complicating this whole conquer other planets thing a bit. <laughs> All that fooling around I did on Ike seems kind of silly to me now. But at any rate, we're here. Let's take a look at what these these crew pods look like. I haven't been able to look inside these yet. Oh, look at that! Look at that! They got little sofas in there. Oh man! Shout out to the guys who did this mod. Yeah, right here. This looks like a nice spot. Set us down right here. Fairly flat, too. Okay, bring us to a halt. I forgot, you know, in my... Oh, is there... Oh, no. I thought I saw something. I keep thinking I see something, but I don't. Okay, this is what we're going to do. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn the brakes on here. And we're going to get the other one, this guy. And we're going to turn his brakes on, and then we're going to... No, oops, other way. Going to go rendezvous with that one. And then in the future, I'm going to continue experimenting with all the parts, because this is this is like a very small fraction of the amount of things that have now opened us up to us with this mod. So many different things that we can do. Like, we can, uh, we can land greenhouses... That's for a mod involving life support, you know, with me complaining a, a while ago about all the stuff about uh, how Kerbals can apparently survive on just snacks for decades out in space. Yeah, apparently there is a life support mod out there for people who are, you know, like that. And I'm definitely like that. Maybe not just yet, though. Maybe I need to I need to start to get my bearings a bit. Games I've already pretty much got my got the hang of the the whole spaceflight aspect of the game. Actual management of life support needs for Kerbals is not something I have any experience with. Okay, so just for future reference, here's what I want to see. Let's turn the brakes on here. Now picture that I bring in a new module for a base that is already landed on the ground, right? This is what the base looks like. Will I be able to dock without having to raise the legs again? Let us see. Okay, so I want to... Oh, careful. I want to get up here like that. Just kind of line us properly. Alright. Okay. And now deactivate landing gear. It doesn't look connected to me. For now, we'll just do it this way. Okay, I saw a little clip there, so I assume they're not connected. Nope, it's not. Okay, hang on. I'm a little confused as to what directions are right now. Hang on. Why are they not docking? Those are both docking ports, aren't they? Do I have to set it as my target first, or what? Why are you guys not connecting? Please connect. Is it because this other one is in motion? Here, turn these brakes on. Why is the connection not happening? Did I... Did I freaking put this on backwards? That's what happened, isn't it? I put this on backwards. Ugh. Well, that's a problem.
problem in the sense that uh, I can now attach these two base parts to each other, but not to anything else I send down here. Well, that should be interesting. Anyway, means I get to try this out again, so let's deactivate the landing gear. There we go, put it down. And then let's bring this guy in. Just to make sure that docking like this is possible. Alright. These wheels are pretty... pretty sensitive. They work pretty well. Alright. Oh! There we go. That is, that is docked. We have our first... Really awesome looking uh, Duna base. Satisfied the contract needs. It is now generating electricity. And then, you know, we're going to increasingly keep bringing out stuff here. But for now, I want to satisfy another contract that we have. How you doing, Valentina? Yet another record. Anyway, we're gonna. This is gonna be that one time where just because you know I forgot again, I'm gonna. Um. I'm gonna cheat over on the, the guy who paid us for this. They're not gonna get their name on this Duna base. We got it now. And then the last thing that I want to check out before I this off is I want to check out this winch. Uh huh. Okay, so she can grab this now, and then she walks with it. And then I suppose if I find if I you know I land a ship here that has a plug on it, then I can connect it to there, and then I can start transferring resources and the like. So that's pretty cool. This is gonna add a whole new layer of depth to this game for me. That away. And I think there's nothing else left to check out here, is there? Was there anything else I needed to do? Flag. Scientific data from the surface of Duna, that's right. Okay. So go ahead and get back inside. And then let's get our scientist out here. Actually, actually for that matter, let's um let's level up the crew. There we go. Then let's, who's the scientist? Buzz. All right, Buzz. Gonna need you to do some scientific work out here. Let's uh, take a, yeah, Kerbal's now have inventory too, by the way, that's another thing. Uh, I don't think I wanna do that. I feel like if I click this button, that will kill him. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm too scared to try it. Way, way too scared to try it. Anyway, let's uh, take a surface sample. Let's take an EVA report. And let's get back inside. Uh, climb. Actually, let's go ahead and just walk right into the science facility. I think we have to deploy this now that I think about it. This is one of those nice compact facilities. Yeah, hang on. There we go. We have to deploy this. Watch. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> it's got a little telescope and everything. Isn't that neat? That is so neat. It's got a little ladder on the side. This is so cool. I like it so much. Okay. Exploring planets is going to become so much fun now. All right. And you get... Uh, grab? Oh, no. Oh, dear. Okay, let me, let me try this. Go ahead and jump. Grab it now. Oof. Oof. <laughs> nope. Didn't work. Oh. That did, though. Okay, we can still jump on top of this. There you go. Get inside. Okay, so that means that we have... This and an EVA sample. We can start working on these. I'm doing this pretty much for RP value at this point, right? We have... Actually, I, I did unlock pretty much everything on the tech tree, but... Um, but installing the mod gave me one more, one more thing to get. So let's start research. 
transmitting the science is going to take a while. And I imagine this is also going to start consuming electrical charge, yeah? So... Being able to, to cre create our own electricity out here is going to be a thing. I actually think I'm going to I'm going to retract this antenna and extend this one, so it's not you know putting a shadow over the solar panels. And I think we're going to call it here. This is going to be the first of, we hope, a series of brand new styles of episodes in which we start colonizing planets, building cities, and now that you know we have these connectors. I can have separate buildings out here having like a little Duna City, a research complex, if you will, without having to have them all connected. Sounds pretty fun, gotta admit. Looking forward to it. See y'all in the future.